This video is brought to you by NordVPN. A man in his early 20s woke up one day with the hiccups. Two weeks passed before he was rid of them, and he thought that was the end of it. Not long after, they returned with a vengeance, persisting for the next three entire years. None of the doctors he went to had any answers. It was a mystery. After his music career was ruined and passing out from his hiccups, he wrote into a newspaper, desperate for any help at all. Next thing he knew, he was famous in Japan. But even with every trick and solution the world had to offer, including a specialized oxygen tank, nothing could help him. Was he cursed to have the hiccups forever? This is the story of aspiring British musician Christopher Sands and the horrible hiccups that threatened to take his life. Back in 2006, Christopher Sands, a 23-year-old British musician, was scouring the internet in search of relief after suffering from hiccups for days. When he discovered that hiccups that last longer than 48 hours might be a warning sign of a brain tumor, he made an appointment with his doctor. His GP told him that it was likely linked to his chronic heartburn, which had been burning his throat and making him vomit since he was a child. The doctor gave him some over-the-counter heartburn medication and sent Christopher on his way. It didn't help. So he returned for all sorts of tests, including blood work and CT scans of different parts of his body. The scans found that he had a hiatus hernia, which meant that his stomach had bulged up through his diaphragm, making it much easier for stomach acid to make its way into his throat. He'd likely had that condition since birth. So while it caused him discomfort, it wasn't the answer to his hiccup problem. Despite this, his hiccup stopped after two weeks. However, in February 2007, they returned. At first, Christopher wasn't concerned. In his words, I had had them before, and they'll probably stop after a couple of weeks. But they didn't. His disappointment was compounded since he had been learning to play the piano, and the hiccups made all progress impossible. My life got put on hold, he said. He couldn't eat, sleep, or practice music, something he'd dedicated his life to. So on did his hiccups hick, and with no other possible causes, Sans' doctors pondered a psychological answer. In an interview with Siobhan Deschauer, otherwise known as Violin MD on YouTube, Sans admitted that the doctors... They seemed a bit nervous asking me because it's probably a bit of a sensitive subject to say someone might be making it up. But for me, it was like, no, if it's that, brilliant. Sans' psych evaluation came back utterly normal. His hiccups weren't psychosomatic, so they were just, uh, somatic? Sans said he came out thinking, on to the next thing, but his doctors had something else in mind. Not doing anything. He remembers his doctor saying, that's it. I've done everything I can do. You're on your own. Which is not something you want to hear your doctor say. It's my husband, Lefty. He was down at the dryer, and I haven't heard from him since. This sounds like a static cling job. But, Mr. Luke Worm, sir, he was using this video's sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN? Yes, with just one click, he could be connected to any of Nord's 5300 servers in 60 countries, and even through two VPN servers with Nord service. Not only that, but he could be connecting from any of the major platforms. Windows, Android, iOS, macOS, and even Linux. But why would he do such a thing? Probably to access sales on video games that aren't available in his country. With NordVPN, all he needs to do is click on a map and he's connected in seconds. But with internet throttling, he, he couldn't download that fast. That's the best part. NordVPN encrypts all your traffic. So ISPs can't slow down streaming speeds. Is your husband a gamer? Uh, he's a hashtag PogChampGamer. I know what happened to your husband. 
he used NordVPN to circumvent geoblockers to play his favorite games from around the world at the Dryers Underworld Esports Tourneys. I know how to bring him home. NordVPN has extended their birthday campaign for us. Get the two-year plan plus one month free from nordvpn.com slash brew with a 30-day money-back guarantee. <gasps> Lefty! I can't quit you, baby. Months later, in July 2007, Sans decided that if his doctor couldn't help him, maybe some doctor somewhere might. So he wrote into local newspaper, the Lincolnshire Echo. The following day, Sans received a phone call back, asking him about an interview and a photo. He was front page news, and suddenly his phone was ringing off the hook. Sands was thrust into fame doing interviews for TV, radio, and news outlets across the globe. Film crews from Brazil to Australia would arrive at his doorstep for comments, sending his story over oceans in hopes that someone, somewhere, might have the answer. Suggestions poured in, and he tried as many as he could. He tried a special glass from a company called the Hiccup. <laughs> he tried the upside down drinking, he even tried a specialized oxygen chamber usually reserved for football players resting after injuries. It was all completely useless, he said, but added, as long as these things keep coming through, I still had a lifeline. So the year continued, and his hiccups got so bad that he began passing out from lack of oxygen. I would wake up with tears in my eyes, my whole body shaking from the shock of it, confused and usually still hiccuping, he lamented. In a twist of cruel fate, the hiccups also prevented him from fulfilling some of his most basic needs. He said, by this time, sleeping wasn't actually sleeping, it was passing out. So he visited his GP once more to see if remedying his hiatus hernia would help. He went in for more testing, including one called a 24-hour pH impedance test that required a catheter slipped up his nose and down his throat for an entire day to measure his throat acidity. At one point, between hiccups and vomit, the hose accidentally rode up his throat and out his mouth, forcing him to swallow it back down himself. Doctors told Sands that fixing his hernia might not necessarily cure his hiccups, but would at least alleviate the pain from his acid reflux and stop his vomiting. So in March 2009, around two years into his hiccup nightmare, Sands went in for stomach surgery. Hiccups are defined as involuntary contractions of the diaphragm, a muscle that sits below your lungs and on top of your stomach. It's the muscle that allows you to breathe. When you inhale, the diaphragm contracts, creating a vacuum pulling in air. When you exhale, it expands, pushing out the air. When you have the hiccups though, these contractions pull air into your lungs while simultaneously closing your vocal cords, producing the titular <coughs> sound. Oh good, they're gone. <clears throat> Normal healthy hiccups occur after eating a big meal or consuming alcoholic and carbonated drinks. It occurs when the stomach bloats up and presses on the diaphragm. Most of the time, hiccups go away after a few minutes, but ones that last longer than 48 hours are called chronic hiccups. Typically, they're easy to diagnose. They're just hiccups that won't go away, but can often be symptoms of life-threatening conditions. Depending on the underlying cause, they can continue for months, like with Chris Sands. For example, a case study from Dr. Joshua Davenport found that chronic hiccups were the only presenting symptom of a heart attack for a 68-year-old patient of his. After putting stents into the patient's heart, his hiccups ended. Another study from Dr. Nasreen Sheikh saw a 74-year-old patient arrive at the hospital presenting with chronic hiccups for the last four days, which only improved with treatment of his heart condition. Hiccups can be caused by anything that irritates your phrenic nerve because it controls your diaphragm. Beyond the diaphragm, the phrenic nerve passes up behind the heart, which is why hiccups can be a rare symptom of heart attacks. From there, the nerve continues up toward the neck, so enlarged lymph nodes or thyroid can also be a cause of hiccups. Finally, the nerve passes into the brainstem, so damage or swelling to the brain can also trigger hiccups. The longest case of chronic hiccups lasted from 1922 to 1990, 
A whopping 68 years. Charles Osborne, born in 1894, was weighing a hog for slaughter when he fell backwards, hitting his head. He said, I picked it up and then I fell down. I felt nothing. But the doctor said later that I busted a blood vessel the size of a pin in my brain. He had damaged a part of his brain that inhibited hiccups, and without it, he hick hick hiccuped uncontrollably. He would hiccup around 40 times per minute, but later in life, they slowed to about 20 per minute. The Mayo Clinic actually taught him how to suppress the noise by breathing very carefully between hiccups. He also had to start blending his food in his old age, since the hiccups prevented most solids from getting down in time. By the time of his death, he had hiccuped approximately 430 million times. Which is a number that kind of takes my breath away. <gasps> no. Even with his condition, he lived a long life, marrying twice and fathering eight children. About a year before his death, his hiccup stopped. No one knows exactly why, but I can imagine he was pretty relieved when it happened. Sands emerged from surgery not much worse for wear, but his hiccups persisted. As he recovered, every <coughs> sent a shooting pain through his body. It was the worst pain he'd ever felt, and staff predicted that his recovery would take longer than usual. Which is awesome to hear when you're in crippling pain! I'm trying out sarcasm, did it work? Weeks passed, Sand's stomach healed, and the heartburn and vomiting he'd been suffering from since childhood was gone. His hiccups remain though, so we'll, we'll call that two out of three. Soon, Sands was contacted by Nihon Television Network Corporation, who sent a crew to the UK to interview him. His story gained some attention from the Japanese public, and shortly after, Seiyu Kageyama, an acupuncturist, offered to come to the UK and treat Sans pro bono. Kageyama pressed needles into every part of Sans' body, including his face, even jabbing one through his chest cavity, narrowly dodging his vital organs to get to the diaphragm. They were just as successful as every other treatment he had undergone in the last two years. That is to say, not well. But Kageyama was the first person aside from Sans' GP to suggest that he might have a tumor. Remembering his CT scans, he told the acupuncturist that that couldn't be it. Not long after, Sans and his sister were invited to fly out to Tokyo by the NTV show World Astonishing News to meet an anesthesiologist by the name of Dr. Kondo. There they took more tests, including an ultrasound, blood work, and an MRI. While they waited for the results, NTV took Sans and his sister to a studio to try out some silly homebrew cures. They didn't work, but it was good TV. Later that day, the TV crew got a call from Dr. Kondo, who asked Sans if he was willing to do another MRI. He was nervous, since he was quite claustrophobic, and after two and a half years of hiccuping, he didn't want to suffer another scan just to find out that that wasn't the answer. Eventually, he was convinced to go back to speak with the doctor, who, when everyone arrived, asked the NTV crew to leave the room for a moment. That's when Dr. Kondo told Sans that he'd found something in the MRI they'd just taken. In Sans' own words, he put up the scans of my brain and he said, Look, I found what I think is a tumor. Sans collapsed into his chair. He could feel tears streaking down his face as the doctor tried to explain that they needed to do another MRI to make sure. Even as the anesthesiologist gave him three times the normal dose, he continued hiccuping as they rolled his unconscious body into the giant machine. After the scan was finished, Sands insisted that the TV crew come with them, since he got an answer thanks to their efforts. So in that small room, surrounded by his sister and cameras, he learned just how dire his situation really was. It was in a bad place, but the doctor wasn't an expert. That second MRI revealed that Sans had a 1.2 centimeter tumor in his brainstem. But wait, didn't Sans GP already check for tumors? Well, MRIs provide much clearer images than CT scans. In addition to that, CT scans aren't very effective at producing crisp images of the back of the brain, where Sans tumor was located. Obviously, Sans's family was devastated. He tried to keep a brave face, and they did too. 
but the days following his return to the UK were tense. He met with a brain surgeon who, after looking at the MRI scans and notes from the Japanese doctor, told Sands that he was confident he could do the operation. The operation came with a risk of side effects, however. It was possible he could lose all feeling in his left arm and leg. His eyesight could become impaired. His speech could suffer, not to mention the possibility that the surgery could be lethal. For a moment, Sands considered the idea he may never be able to play music again, and thought, just for a moment, to forgo the surgery and spend the last year of his life doing what he loved. After more MRIs back in Japan from a doctor known as the Hand of God, Dope name. Sands returned to the UK and booked a date for his brain surgery. On September 7th, 2009, Sands arrived at the hospital the night before his operation with three different film crews in tow. The morning of, he woke up, kissed his family goodbye, and told the TV crews, I don't want to die. I don't really feel anything. I feel very strange. He had accepted what was going to happen. Two days later, Sands awoke. His mouth was bone dry, and his head was pounding. A nurse stood over him, dabbing his lips with a wet sponge. His body was fuzzy, as if it was asleep. His right arm was mostly usable, but his left was, to quote, a mess. The nurse asked him if he wanted to do a drunk test, where you touch your finger to your nose. His right hand had no issue, but when he went to do the same with his left, he full force slapped himself in the face, and the two of them just burst into laughter. That was the moment he realized that his hiccups were gone. His family poured in and shared in the happiness. Later that day, he listened to a recording of one of his songs on the piano and burst into tears, thinking about how he might never be able to play again. His home life was hard at first, but he had plenty of help. His hiccups did come back for a while, making attending his sister's wedding difficult. The swelling after the surgery still pressed up against that part of the brain which triggered his hiccups. Imagine, you have the hiccups for three years, find out it's from a tumor, have a life-threatening operation to remove the tumor, think your hiccups are gone, <coughs> then they come back. How terrifying is that? <laughs> Fortunately, the hiccups did stop after he had fully healed. Today, Sands has almost recovered fully. In a journal entry posted online, he closes saying, I don't think I'll ever get full use of my left arm back, but I can play guitar and piano again. I think it'll take a while before I'm fully back to normal, but through the kindness and support I received throughout my ordeal, I at least have a chance. <laughs>